Have you ever wondered how someone who is blind or partially sighted crosses the road? Crossings with traffic lights. They should have a spinning cone at the bottom, which is what I use. It spins when it's green and it's safe for me to go. Curb heights are very important because you need to know how high they are. They show you where a footpath essentially ends, where I'm no longer safe to walk and where the road begins. Where I live there are lots of drop curbs so wheelchair users can use them, but they're very flat to the road. What we've got behind us is tactile markings on the ground, but no crossings associated with them. Here in Leicester City Centre, several control crossings have been removed. It simply doesn't allow me to determine when it is safe to cross. The guide dogs are trained to go to curbs. They don't necessarily realise that tactile paving is an obstacle so sometimes they can step over them. They've been changing a lot of the kind of key areas in Kingston. No one really knows who can go where. I'm having to share the same space with cyclists and motorists as well. It's daunting because I can't make eye contact with either of those and I'm trying to focus on which way I'm going with my white cane. And a lot more uncertain about where I should be walking and where I shouldn't and it makes me a lot more anxious than I would ever usually be coming into my local towns. In the UK, more than two million people like me are living with sight loss. I am naturally very confident and independent, but equally I don't take unnecessary risks. I want to be able to independently use these areas just like any other person. Join us to make streets safe to cross. Visit rnib.org.uk forward slash safe to cross. RNIB, supporting people with sight loss.